What's up YouTube? This is Sam from Tiger Schooling and today we're going to talk about the arterial blood gases and the arterial puncture and in that we'll be talking about the defining terms reasoning for collecting ABGs which is arterial blood gases we'll be talking about the common ABGs parameters and uh, preferred collection sites uh, and we'll talking about the reasoning of why we use the uh, Allen's test and in the and finally we'll be talking about the procedure and hazards associated with your arterial collections without waiting too much let's get started first we'll be talking about the why do we collect abgs which is arterial blood gases remember uh the if you're going to simplify or simply define it it will be uh, the answer would be we use ABGS or arterial puncture to take the arterial uh, arterial blood uh, arterial blood and why do we use that? We want the measurement of gases. The main thing we want to measure the gases. So in an, in another way, if you want to put it, you can use uh, use the definition as used to diagnose respiratory efficiency or to diagnose managed respiratory uh, diseases. But the main thing we use it for the gas collection or the identification of gas. And the information which includes in it are your oxygenation, we check up the oxygenation, ventilation and acid base balance which is the body pH. The normal values you would normally get from a patient uh, or you can say uh, within uh, with with doing it with the ABG or you can have the pH of 7.35 to 7.45 and the partial pressure of our oxygen would be between 80 to 100 millimeter of mercury and uh, partial pressure for carbon dioxide would be between 35 to 45 millimeter of mercury and the bicarbonate normally 22 to 26 milli equivalent per liter and oxygen saturation 97 percent to 100 percent at optimum patients room air must be at 92 to 97 now let's move on and talk about the arteries used for collection for most remember for most of the blood gases uh, the arteries which are preferred are the first preferred artery is the radial artery which is located on your hand on the thumb side the second artery is the brachial artery which is also on your hand but it is in the cubital fossa the third one is your femoral artery um, uh, just uh, just uh, in, in on the side of the pubis you will be using that femoral artery and the fourth if you can't find an artery or femoral artery you can use the dorsal pedis artery which is in the foot which is the fourth option first we'll talking about the radial artery why we use the radial artery uh, the the basic reason for using uh, the radial artery which is usually the first choice is because it's the most superficial and easily accessible the, th the third thing is it is located on the thumb side of the wrist and the main reason we use the radial artery if somebody if a teacher is going to ask you why we use radial artery you won't be giving up the above answers they are related but the most important thing is the collateral circulation and the collateral circulation is by the ulnar artery if you read up the uh the, what is written on this slide you can find out that we use the radial artery because of the fact that the ulnar artery also supplies blood to the hand which is the collateral circulation so the blood supply to the hand will remain viable okay and uh, and remember do not use the ulnar artery for the arterial puncture let's talk about the radial artery which is uh, this one on the thumb side you can see in the diagram in the picture this is radial artery on the thumb side and the ulnar artery on the other side the second artery which we use is the, if you can't find the radial artery we'll be using the brachial artery so the advantage to using the brachial artery is that it is large and easy to locate feeling for the pulse but the problem is it is located on the inside of the arm lateral to the anticubital fossa it is located inside the cubital fossa so the, uh, the disadvantages main disadvantages of this is it is much deeper uh, it lies close to the basilic veins and it close to the median nerve and uh, larger vessels so the chances of clot formation is much higher so compression is more difficult so the risk of hematoma is higher so usually avoid it but uh, in case we can't find the radial artery we'll be using the brachial artery if you want to see uh, where the brachial artery is located you can find it exactly down here and this is your brachial artery right at 
and between your arm and hand and that third artery we use is the femoral artery if you can't find the br brachial artery we'll be using the femoral artery which is located in the groin lateral to your pubis bone advantage it is very large artery and it can easily be palpable reserved for emergency code or doctor request in the emergency case we will be using it the main disadvantages of uh, this artery is uh, uh, it has really much poor collateral circulation and because of location infection risk is higher it look it look lies close proximity to the, your femoral vein and it is very difficult uh, compressing site so direct pressure is applied for 10 minutes with the femoral artery femoral artery if you want to see it in this diagram you can find down here this is your femoral artery just in your groin area and then now we'll talk about the stable state so this stable state is used in normally we use this stable state but in emergency cases we don't follow this procedure or this stable state so in emergency cases it's like do or die life or death so that's why we don't use it but in normal case if you are going to uh, measure the abgs you you would follow these uh, these uh, these points so uh, number one you have to remember it is extremely important that the patient be in a stable state prior to collecting the sample to avoid skewed results so this include do not exercise for at least 20 minutes you know you can walk but you cannot exercise before taking the test remember this no respiratory changes should be there within the last 20 minutes no sanctioning in the last 20 minutes and no treatments in the last 20 minutes Equipments we will be using about the uh, alcohol gauge, which should be 70% isopropyl alcohol. And uh, we're using 23 gauge needle, heparin syringe. Uh, the heparin syringe is must, so we do not get the blood clotted. And we will be using the filter pro. And we'll be and then uh, let's talk about the Allen's test, performing the Allen's test. So what is Allen's test? Which is, it is uh, Allen's test is used to determine collateral circulation if uh, in case if the cold circulation is present or not so this test will uh, confirm it uh, that either the cold circulation is present or not remember if you are unable to obtain a pulse from site or radial site is weak or spotted use allen state to determine if cold circulation is present color changes within your 5 to 15 minutes which indicate cold circulation radial puncture is decided are acceptable so what is the Allen's test? Remember, apply firm pressure to the radial and outdoor pulse sites together on the same time. Put your uh, block the uh, you know close or apply pressure on your radial artery and ulnar artery at the same side, and have the patient rapidly open and close her hand until palm is blanched. And in the final phase, uh, remember, uh, instruct the patients to open his hand and then release the pressure on the ulnar artery only. If you release the ulnar artery pressure, if the hand turns from yellow color to redness within 5 to 15 minutes, then the test is, uh, then, then you are good to, like, it means that the ulnar artery is okay. So there is no problem in the ulnar artery. And again, you will be applying and you will be doing this uh, for the again for the radial artery and if the radial artery also shows the same taste like after leaving it turns uh, closing the ulnar artery it turns red that means the blood uh, blood su uh, supply through the uh, radial artery is also fine so there's a color to circulation and you are good to go to do the test uh, to perform the abgs so arterial collection radial artery and uh, this is the method to how we kind of want to use this so arm is extended and wrist flexed about 30 degrees to stretch and fix the soft tissue or ligaments and bone first look at the radial by assessing for pose clean sight we'll be seeing the pictures in just a bit just going through read read this thing just to have a pre mindset so look at radial by assessing for pulse clean side and uh, gloved fingers with 70% isopropyl alcohol relocate uh, the pulse without using your hand and uh, your hands off holding through it like a dart remember hold it. if you're doing it for the first time remember how to hold uh, your string you hold it for the uh, as a dart and if you're going to apply it for the arterial punk radial artery use the angle 30 to 45 if you're going for the femoral use uh, 45 to 90 degrees 
and uh, in case with radial artery we're talking about the regular artery so it's a 30 to 45 degree angle level up and facing the blood flow remember face it in the direction of the blood flow so this should be 10 to 5 to 10 millimeter from the finger over the artery collect the specimen and withdraw needle and apply five minutes of dark pressure assess bleeding continue applying pressure until bleeding has stopped expire air bubbles mix blood in hepar heparinized syringe 30 seconds horizontal rolling first and five inversions we'll be talking about this what does that mean in just a bit so first what we're going to do is prepare the syringe and rem remove the filter pro push plunger up to dispel air and attach needle then we'll be locating the site where to uh, where to apply and uh, with the first flicks at 30 degree then we clean the site with the alcohol a gauge and we'll uh, we'll be holding the syringe like a dot at 30 30 to 45 degree and they will be collecting sample or normally 2 ml and but in case we can't find so 0.5 ml is the minimum and then we'll, uh, we'll prepare the specimen first uh, tapping the syringe or flicking with the finger move air bubbles to the top to expel through the filter probe and we'll be expelling the air and then after that we'll be mixing the sample uh, for mixing the sample you have to roll back and forth horizontally for 30 seconds and then rotate wrist back and forth for five inversions now we'll talk about the arterial collection brachial or femoral artery first uh, if you're talking about these two arteries that is brachial or femoral i remember we'll be using the same procedure is followed but the angles are the angles differ it's 45 to 90 degrees the brachial artery and uh, 90 degree for the femoral artery 45 to 90 degree for brachial artery and 90 degree for the femoral artery the other procedure is same and uh, will be and the similar situation is followed uh, the only the thing differs is the we will be using 23 gauge for radial and 22 for the brachial artery and uh, and the other thing phase we'll be talking about the transport and sand so ideal specimen is collected and sent uh, to hcl as it is good for 15 minutes at room temperature that's the normal rate and uh, now we'll talk about the hazards and complication of arterial puncture so the end Arterial spasm, number one complication, which is caused by the pain or irritation of needle insertion and involuntary constriction of an artery. Discomfort a bit more than venipuncture. Hematoma, more vascular pressure than a vein. Apply five minutes of direct pressure. Thrombus, from injury to inner wall of tear, ear, uh, artery. And uh, vasovagal response, which is the syncope, is more likely from an arterial puncture than a venous puncture caused by nervous system, which is response to increased vagus nerve stimulation. And the one thing more that is not mentioned in this art, uh, this what we call uh, uh, this slide, is that uh, what what is the difference between the veiny puncture and the arterial puncture? So there are two things that must be in mind. There are a lot of things, but two things must be in mind. We don't apply the tourniquet while taking the arterial puncture because the blood flow is already too much high. So we don't need to build up the blood pressure, or the uh, the arterial blood pressure. So that's why we don't use the uh, tourniquet. And we don't uh, pull the plunger so that the blood moves automatically inside the syringe. So that's it regarding the uh, lecture on arterial puncture or you can say ABGS, which is arterial blood gases. If you want uh, any lecture on any topic, please make sure to leave us a comment and uh, let us know how we can help you. And keep visiting Tides Schooling and must visit the www.tidesschooling.com. See you soon.